essentially, I'd like to begin this presentation with focusing on the middle part. And you just actually memorized all. Oh, it starts with physical, social, mental, and spiritual. And these are the essentials of good governance. After learning it from my public sector reform in the UK and all my trainings, this is actually uh, a practical representation of that. You know, governance, when you say governance, you should not only focus on the physical aspects, like they would help, peace and order. You have to also address the social aspects. You have to address the mental aspects. And so is the uh, physical and spiritual aspects. You guys are not doing it. Or when I mentioned, you have to catch up. See? That's what you're supposed to do. Okay, so the, the point is, even in Maslow's law of needs, you have the basic needs, you have the belongingness, self-esteem, and self-actualization. So essentially, when a government is delivering service, you have to address these four things. You know, 100 years ago, they thought of leadership purely as a physical aspect. And so what they do is they ask people to do this, do that. They didn't know, it was only in the 1940s, 1960s, that they realized that people are human beings needing social acceptability. And it was only in, in the information age that we thought, yeah, intelligence knowledge is very difficult. And it's only in the recent ages that we realized that people do not only need to eat, they do not look, need only to be friends, they don't only need to read, they also want to self-actualize. They also want to, to be the best that they could be, to, to live a legacy, something for their soul. You're coming quick. Okay, so now, again, when, when you talk about roles of the youth, you have two types. The first is governing yourself, and the second is governing the governing as a collective youth. Now let's begin with yourself. Let's begin from below, as a worker. Why worker? Because, you know, you have to begin with your own gifts. Who are you? They might, do you have skills? Do you have a profession? Are you developing your speaking skills, your writing skills, your organizing? As a human being, you need to be a worker. And then in some instances, you could be a manager, and, and the manager is the one that develops teamwork. But you know the foundation of teamwork? There are two things. Remember, the foundation is trust, integrity, honesty. And I remember my father, when he said, as regards honesty, he's a doctor, and in Egypt, somebody went to him, uh, or was it in Saudi, he said, okay, sign this death certificate, he died because of a heart attack, but the guy died because of a gunshot. And he said, no way, we're going to give you Mercedes Benz. He said, no way. So that's honesty. My uncle also did mention about uh, uh, the number one rule in teamwork and even in yourself is integrity, honesty. Not even in little things should you be honest about. Now, again, manage, man, as manager in the mental state, you have to continue learning. When learning is like a candle, what are you? Are you a candle? Are you operating based on the light of the moon? Or are you like daylight? The more you read, the more you're like driving during the day. And finally, it's about leadership. Leadership is about meaning versus happiness. Victor Frank Till was like in Corregidor. He was sent to Alasica and he studied people there. The only people who survived were people who lived for a purpose. Those who had meaning in their lives. All the rest died. I, I remember, I, I think I'm the only one, Muslim, Filipino, uh, I'd like you to tell me that I'm wrong, that graduated from UP College of Civil Engineering in Diliman, because I don't know anyone Muslim Filipino. But the point is, it took so hard for me, because I was a graduate from Zamboanga, and I competed with valedictorians from Visay, from all the valedictorians in the country. And the reason I survived was because I realized I was one of the 26,000 students in UP, I was one of the 15 Muslims, and Two thousand, and I was the only two out of four thousand college uh, students there. And the point is, I came from a background, a history, six hundred years of struggle, and then you go to UK and get kicked out. So that purpose, that meaning, was the driving force for me to at 
accept pain because if you need to be happy, then you're pleasure driven and you want to avoid pain. And that's what happened to Philippine science students. A lot of my friends, after the second year, they got kicked out because they became pleasure driven, they avoided pain, they didn't have a purpose. Clearly, what you want is to have a meaning. And that's what you have to understand in your spiritual side. What is your purpose? Victor Frankl did say, you know, um, it's critical that between stimuli and response is your power to decide. No matter what people do to you, no matter what circumstance the more people have now, we have the power to decide. We can be violent or we could do a peaceful revolution. We could empower ourselves. We could lobby. We could be like Mujib who could, who could ask the president to come here tomorrow. The point is we have the power to decide. And that is here. Okay, so essentially, um, when we talk about governance, it talks about governing ourselves. And for example, you're governing your own family. And you're uh, a worker, you're the worker. When you're managing your kids, you're managing. But when you're saying, oh, family natin di ipat na, dun sa sambuaga, di ipat sa dalo, you're leading because you're deciding. So next is, we'll talk about the responsibilities of the youth in general. So it's the same thing. As a collective youth, you are also a worker. But then, the question is, what are you working for? It is critical, as I said. I want to emphasize here, you know, when you're a worker, we have 1,000 to almost 2,000 workers in my project, and their salary is 5,000 to 6,000 a month. My wife is an anesthesiologist. She could inject in an R, earns 5,000 as well. In an R, she earns what those people earn in a month. Like lawyers appear, uh, appear, and then they get 5,000. The point is, there's demand and supply. You as a worker, as a youth, have to decide what added value do you want to add in your life to the community. Do you want to become professional? Do you want to add value to a process? That is what. And you have to utilize your gifts. Are you good at speaking? Then utilize that gift. I'd like to acknowledge uh, the governor. Uh, Governor Abuji Mataman to uh, for the uh, Thank you, Doc. So, going back to the, to the roles of the youth. Doc, okay lang patutuloy ako, Doc? Doc? Okay lang patutuloy ako mag-fan? Kakaya. Okay lang, Doc? Okay. So, anyway, so that is the roles of the, the youth as a person. But when your roles as a collective people then you again ask yourself, kung grupo ka ngayon ng mga Moro youth, what niche do you have? Are you, are you advocates? Are you specialists? Are you technocrats? You know, the reason why the MNLF peace agreement failed? Because they did not utilize technocrats. Why could we possibly implement a circumferential road with, with eight lanes in Sulu because nobody was there, a technocrat, to advise that that's not actually feasible? So, in the future, when there's another peace agreement, it is important that the youth, you have to develop a line, an experience that will allow you to add value to a process, be it as a government worker, as a specialist, or an NGO worker, or an advocate. So, the, you could do development via the youth, you could do admin. The point is, specialize, either as a group, as an advocate. Then you go to managing. When, when you manage, again, it's critical the teamwork the trust that you develop with the people you work with. And when you work with integrity and honesty and trust, then you develop a powerful teamwork and network. Why do you think when a president believes somebody to come to Corridor? Because the president trusted him. Because the president believes that he will not lie and that he keeps his word and that he is honest. So that is how powerful the personal integrity is and honesty is. And when we, as a as a more youth, would like to manage or or develop a group, the foundation of that is trust and honesty. But the second level is is the skills of conflict resolution. It is critical that you must understand that there may be people who disagree with you, who might have different views. 
and you must be able to understand that that is natural. Conflict is natural, it is just the adjustment of two people to a level of an equilibrium. Ibig sabihin, you must also seek to understand because in, in some way, you might be seeing things that you do not see. And then we'll move over to the mental aspect. The mental aspect, you have transparency. Then as a group, you could lobby for transparency. And we could observe that the governor is doing that. We, we do a lot of training, and that's what we're doing. Build capacities, policy, talk about history. A people who doesn't know their history will not know their meaning. Because they think, you know, that's why I always cry when I see brilliant moral people, valedictorians, and they just end up hanging around in Greenbelt or going abroad. It's critical that we develop meaning in our lives. Finally, leadership. Leadership for roles as a youth, it is critical that, you know, in the spiritual aspect, you are stewards. Why are you here? Why were you born? You could have been born in Africa, you could have been born in Alaska, but why? Here, in Mindanao, in this age, and in this training. Because you are entrusted with this, with your skills, but you have self-will. How you use that will is critical. And you do this as your group intention. And that's what uh, Bob Mujib's group, with Alga, with Chris, that is what we have been. We have been trying to think out of the box, why were we here? And for 25 years, we have been together, slowly and building up, trying to influence a direction for us. I'll tell you a story about, for you to easily understand the difference between leadership, management, and worker, but remember Super Ferry. Sino lang ako sa Super Ferry dito? When you are a worker, ikaw yung engineer sa engine room. Ikaw yung kusinero sa Super Ferry na nagbibigay ng pagkain. When you're the manager, imina-manage mo kung anong oras yung pagkain, kailan darating yung gasolina. But when you are the leader, you are the one saying, pabilisin yung barko ng Titanic. Let's double the speed at night. Or, yung may isang ship din, di ba? Na pinalapit na masado sa isla. Therefore, you have a very powerful role when you talk about leadership. And when you talk about leadership for the youth, for the moral youth, the purpose of that is to bring the moral situation to a place that it is not, that they have not yet been before. The purpose of that is not to get the ship super ferry go around and around. You want to bring the super ferry ship from Mindanao to Luzon. And that requires intense leadership, you need good management, and you need also to become great workers. So, a triumvirate of that is that you as moral youth could participate by becoming part of the government. You could be part of civil society, or you could be in the private sector. So, essentially, that is what you should remember. Now, I give you four questions that you must remember, and I bet, pagsasagutin nyo ito, mapapahiya kayo. And you keep on trying to answer this. The first answer is, what are my gifts? Ano ba yung regalo sa akin? Madada ba ako? Okay. Magaling ba ako magsulat? Mabilis ba ako mag-memorize? What are my gifts? <coughs> Marami ba ang pera na resources na binigay ng tatay sa akin? Saan ko gagamitin yun? What do I, what added value do I give? Ibig sabihin, anong added value yung, yung, yung pagiging madagdal mo, o magaling kang magbasa, o valedictorian mo, if you're not adding value to the society? That is what you have to answer now. Product and process. Pwede kasi gumawa ka ng produkto o pwede kang magpagdagdag sa process. When you say product, halimbawa, yung weaver, lalagyan mo ng thread yan. Ang lalabas na pakagandang piece. Siya, you give a worker cement, steel, uh, aggregates, and you have a structure. You give a doctor some medicine and, and, and his instruments and he will cure life. The point is, ano ba ang gifts nyo? Bawat isa sa atin may gifts. And that is for a purpose. Are you using that gift? Pangalawang tanong. Hey, etong gift piece na to. Hindi mo nakita yung judge. Ayan, okay. Number two, social. Etong tanong. Kung lahat ng pera na kailangan nyo sa buong buhay nyo ever is now with you. You're the billionaire. You don't need to work. What will you do? Ano ka gawin nyo? Example, ikaw. Ano ka gawin mo? Tuturok saan? 
Eh bakit ngayon na wala pa, hindi ka pa pwede tumulong? Wala pa. But, but, but the point is, yung iba ba, ikaw, yung iba ba, if you have all the money in the world, anong gagawin mo? You don't have to work. Spend it and tour the world. Or not the world, okay? Ikaw, kung lahat ng pera na sa sa'yo, anong gagawin mo? Hindi mo na lang magtrabaho, wala kang boss, anong gagawin mo? Mag-enjoy. Okay. Scam. Bro, ikaw, anong gagawin mo? Spread your Islam. So see, the point is, for every people, the answer is different. Heart, that is the passion. That is your passion. And actually, that is what you should be focusing about. Halimbasa, you don't need all the money to start that. You can start it now. I'll go to the mind. Ito, ito ang tanong. Kung lahat ng posisyon, tatanggalin sa'yo, hindi ka engineer, hindi ka lawyer, wala kang appointment sa gobyerno, nothing. Why? Will people follow you? <coughs> that is critical. Why? Oh, you have nothing, no position, no title, no money. Why will people follow you? You have to answer that. The fourth is, as I said, if my life is a trust, what is my mission? Why am I here? Why? You know, things just doesn't happen in an accident. There, it happens for a reason. And you have to answer that. And it's a long uh, uh, process. Pangule, three weeks ago, you know, hindi ako nagtatrabaho sa Mindanao, so mas secure ang trabaho ko. Mas matindi yung ego. Ang daming stress, ang daming threats. But then, kumakain kasi ako ng prawns noong umaga, the next day, prawns din, kasi mga meeting, pangatlo, prawns din, tapos pang apat na araw, bulalo, at 12 midnight, nagising ako. And hindi ko na magdalaw yung kamay ko. Tapos nanginginig na ako. Tapos yung dalawang kamay ko. Tapos hindi na ako makahinga. And I said, Oh my God. Naku, sayang. Sana ganito. Naimagin ko kagad yung mga anak ko, yung mga kaibigan ko, si Kong Mujib. Lahat ng kaibigan ko. Lahat ng kaibigan ko. You have a lot of roles. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I'm a student. I'm a peace advocate. You too have a lot of roles. The question is, kung bigla ako namatay that time, ano ba yung masasabi ni Gong Pujir? Sabi niya, mabihira kasi. Gusto niya, doon sa ortiga siya niya. O kaya, yung ibang pisa, ano ba? Kung kaya nga, yung anak ko, kasi nga kasi wala, nagtrabaho, wala yung usapan eh. Kasama yung nila yan eh. The point is, you have to understand that, you know, you don't have to live in a war zone to die. Even in the most peaceful area, by just what you eat, you can die. And by that fact, that God could take your life any time, you ask the question, what would be said of me? By my wife, my kids, my friends, my brothers, my relatives? Eh, wala, sarili niyo naman pinag-isipan niya eh. Wala, kulihipot yan eh. Oh, hindi nag-advise saan, hindi naman nagturo saan, palaging galit yan saan eh. The point is, you have to understand that maybe Allah will give you an age of 85 that can read it. And if Allah gives you that age, what will you do? And if that happens, you have to plan your course in that direction already. Isa pa, yung misis ko, nung last year, sabi niya, ano, mag-abroad na lang tayo, pwede siya mag-work as anesthesiologist abroad. Laki! Yung kaibigan niya, best friend niya, 10 million a year, yung income. 10 million a year. Tapos sabi niya, pero, di ba pinaaral tayo? I've been set. Good. Pinaaral tayo sa UP. Pala kami ng UP. Ang dami namin training, ang dami ng advocacy. Tapos, ano, parang pagsilpihan yung nasa US. Sabi niya, paano na lang sina Amir? Yung sinabi niya talaga, paano yung advocacy natin sa young moral professionals? Paano na lang yung minta na? And so she said, okay, sige, kahit mahirap dito, we will stand by it. Because, you know, Again, it's the spiritual, it's the stewardship, it's the meaning, it's living a life of, of purpose. So essentially, that's a summary. You could just read through it. And i just like to run through this in my last four minutes because you'll ask me, so ang gagawin namin? After understanding your roles and those three levels of the physical, social, mental, and spiritual, remember this, the youth are the leaders of the future. But, actually, the youth must lead now. 25 years ago, Kog Mujib was already leading 
lobbying, advocating. Sina Chris, sina Alka, leaders na. And they were as young as you, they were concerned. Therefore, you are not only future leaders, you should be leaders now in your community. You could initiate, you could be proactive. Again, you are not a victim of your circumstance, but you are a product of your decisions. You can decide not to be reactive. You can decide not to be violent. You can decide to focus on what you can influence, kung ano yung kaya mo, and gradually build up. Before, 20 years ago, we were dreaming na sana makausap natin yung presidente. Sana yung si senador makausap natin. Eh, kanin, extra. That is the power. When you begin as youth leaders, you start leading now, you will develop the skills, the knowledge, and the attitude of succeeding. So, take note. This one, meron ito. Ano to? This is? Where? This is spiritual. Your life is a trust. Do you believe that? Kasi yung walang trust lang naman, yung mga pusa, aso. Kasi wala silang mission eh. But we have a soul. And we believe in divine purpose. Then we know that there is trust. We also know for a fact, sinabi ni Dr. Gato, that we are a product of centuries of struggle. If, if a generation is 33 years, then you are a product of 33 generations. Yung lolo na lolo na lolo na lolo na lolo na lolo na lolo, pinagkaman kayo, tapos kayo ngayon, anong ginagawa nyo? Dilunustay lang ba sa Green Belt? For no purpose at all. Napakagaling nyo, ang dami ng pera, ang dami ng pan. Sige, travel lang, bahala na. But do not forget that you may have a purpose. So, the beginning part is become aware, get concerned. Yun din naman yung sa amin, sa panahon yung nagpapujib. Concerned, aware. Hindi lang pinabasa na kung si ginagawa ng gobyerno eh. So, see problems, ask why. Bakit? Bakit pa poor yung nasa Mindanao? Bakit? Kasi hindi na kapag-aral. Bakit ba hindi na kapag-aral? Kasi may kera. Bakit ba may kera? Kasi may issues. Bakit ba may issues? Eh, kasi hindi pa nanunutas yung peace agreement. Eh, bakit hindi hindi nanunutas? If you build down on the whys, then you will reach a point that you could actually do something about it. Ah, pwede pa lang. Tutulong na lang tayo sa pag-popularize ng peace agreement. Tutulong na lang tayo sa pagsira ng stereotypes against Muslims. Tutulong na lang tayo in being an example of Muslims who are peace-loving. And then we go, who will benefit? Sino ba magbe-benefit dito? Pag may peace na sa Mindanao. Ah, well, you know, business owners can also benefit. Sino pa magbe-benefit? Will the government? Sino pa? Private sector. Then, you make them partners. Build alliances. Because you could never work alone. Even your friends, sabi niya, oh, magbe-benefit ka, taga Mindanao ka ba, taga, taga Arm ka ba? Oh, kung may peace na sa Arm, magbe-benefit ka. Good. Then let's work together. Then, you organize, develop skills, talents, and advocate. And what, when you say organize, develop skills, talent, what is this? Stomach. Very good. So, essentially, if you want to organize, you have three options. Number one, you could deliver projects. May condition kayo, ano, mag-organize kayo. Number two, you could do policy intervention. Mag-recommend kayo sa, sa Senado, sa Kongreso, sa mga policy makers, NYC, of policies that will continue on kahit wala ka na. Kasi itong project, one time, big time. Kung hindi ka na sa position o wala ka ng pera, hindi mo na magawa yung project. Ito naman, once may pasok mo yan, when you do, when you integrate positive policy intervention, remember, in Lincoln, sino na kapanan ng pelikula ni Lincoln, it was not easy for him to push the the fifth or third amendment for blacks to be given rights. You know, it was so difficult. He had a lot of strategies. The point is, policy intervention requires strategy, but it's long-lasting. Kaya nakaupo pa rin siya sa Washington, D.C. hundreds of years after because this is a legacy. And third, accountability. We, as the youth, with the power of technology, Facebook, you have the power of technology and information. You can command accountability. So how do we make sustainable good governance? Number one is make government responsive to what? The basic needs, physical, social, mental, spiritual. And then, how do you make this responsive? You go to empowered civil society. And who are empowered civil society? You, the youth, the elders, all of us who are not part of government. If empowered can demand responsive governance, Responsive governance, kung nag-act yung gobyerno natin, may empower tayo. ARM is an example of that. When ARM became responsive, 
we have a civil society that is empowered. And now that you are empowered, you can organize, you can demand more governance, better governance. So, essentially, I want you to remember, number one, be inspired. Inspired is what? Pwede lahat tayo. Inspired is what? Inspired? No? Spiritual. Inspired. Lead. Leadership. It's still spiritual. Leading. Yeah? Mentor. Very good. It's the mind. Influence. Very good. Social. Make a positive change. Positive change. It's still spiritual because it's leaving a legacy. Leave a legacy is what? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Pasensya na ito. I like that. So, I'm uh, Ami and my classmates are glad to have a story. Omar. Hi. Ah, Iman. Oh, sorry. Oh. Okay, thank you.